Hi everyone, thank you for watching my talk. My name is Arisa Zaki. I'm a DevRel engineer working at Storyblock. So today we are going to see together how I18N um, gives the impact and making your applications accessible to over 70% of the users in the world. Moving on to the next slide. And here is the three here are the three takeaways from my talk. First of all, we are going to see the impact of the I18N as well as the DX for the, uh, for the developers. And we're going to see the fundamental logics. Lastly, we're going to see how it works with Remix. There are a couple of notes. So this talk is first of all for the developers who implement internationalization. Secondly, Remix and I18N uh, features are ongoing discussions. If you're interested in to join the discussions, here's the link. And I'm going to make sure to share my slides on the social media. So you will have access to all the sources that I'm going to share. So internationalization, I18N is first of all, is an acronym of internationalization. And let's see some of the I18N uh, developer experience. So here's my friend Maya. Uh, she shared with me her experience on Twitter saying that there is a relearning cost how to use the internationalization library every single time. And there is also another issues, I would say that um, localized text versus the I18N keys, um, you know, in the tests are not matching. So from, from her opinion, um, or not just her, but based on that, um, seems it's not the best DX. So based on, you know, like the current I18N DX you have, um, let's talk about the numbers and facts. So starting from the whole entire numbers of the users in the world, actually it's 5.07 billions of the users um, using the internet. And surprisingly, English is used only 25.9% on the internet. And Asia leads more than half of the global internet users. So all the numbers are huge, right? And we cannot simply ignore about these, you know, massive numbers. And by knowing the different approaches with more options will actually solve the your current I18N DX. So let's talk about the fundamental logic. There are three ways to determine the languages and the regions. First of all, um, there is the way to detect the location from the IP address, which we are not going to cover in this talk. But secondly, um, here's the example of respecting what users, you know, like configured in their browser setting, you know, like which languages to choose. And lastly, there is a way to identify in the URL. And I'm going to show you the three patterns to identify URLs. So pattern one um, is differentiating, you know, by domains, but it will not follow the same origin policy. The pattern two is using the URL parameters, but it doesn't look user friendly, right? And the last pattern is localized subdirectories. This looks much cleaner and much more user friendly. So moving on to the framework examples, there are in general two approaches to choose. So the first approach would be like using an NPM package um, that is, you know, related with I18 next. And the other approach is with a combination of the content management system. So this talk is about the Remix. So I'm going to show you the Remix I18 next um, example first. I'm moving on to show you the content management system example. So Remix I18 next is an NPM package for Remix to use the I18NEX. So first step will be creating the translation files. In this case, I have a default language in English saying greeting hello and the translated, you know, like the um, translation file greeting says um, hello in Japanese. And let's create an I18NEX configuration file. So in here, what I'm defining is supported languages, fallback language, and the default namespace. So this namespace common is actually what I gave the names into these translation files. Moving on to, you know, like the other file called i18nextserver.js file. So in here, what I'm doing is importing what we configured in i18nextconfig file. And, you know, like from the previous file, what we configured, um, you know, the values are actually arrays in the strings. So we iterate them from the configuration file from the previous slide. And the rest, we are setting the translation file paths. So next up is creating the client side and the server side configuration files. From the time I have, um, I'm going to focus on for the client side, but don't worry about it. Server side, you know, config files looks pretty much the same and a few differences. So entry.client.jsx file. What I want you to pay attention is, um, is with the orange highlighted on, uh, you know, line of the code, uh, which is an API called i18x provider. So 
For this, um, by using this API, we want to wait to ensure the translations are loaded before the hydration happens. And we're going to see why together in one of the following slides. And next up, um, you know, like we wrap the Remix browser component in between i18 next by the component. Um, so we are also going to see the reasons in one of the following up um, slides. So the first why. Why translation should be loaded before the hydration? So imagine if translation is not loaded before the hydration happens, the application is not yet interacted. So users cannot see, you know, the localized value. And the other example, if translation is already loaded before the hydration happens, the application is interactive. So users can see the localized content. Moving on to the second one, why wrapping Remix browser component with i18 next provider? So I did a little bit of research in node modules, and here's what I find and what I found on where you know like i18 next provider has been defined. So it uses actually a um, you know re uh, React. Uh, Sorry. So it uses actually the React um, hook called use memo, and this um, this actually caches the result of the calculation between re-renders. So what I mean by that to say is, you know, like this i18 and configuration values and the default namespace values are the same, then we don't trigger the re-rendering. But if the values or either one of the values are changed, then that's the only time we are going to trigger the re-rendering. So let's use the configurations in action. So moving on to the app directory, um, you know, opening up this root.jsx file, then I want you to pay attention to the three APIs. So the first one is called loader function. This loader function is a backend API already provided from the Remix site, and it's already, you know, connected uh, with the used loader data. So this use, lo use loader data gets the locale from the loader function. And lastly, what we are doing is calling, um, calling an API called JSON. So instead of, you know, like defining the new response headers, blah, 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 um, you can do the same thing um, with just, you know, one line of the code. And in the end, there is a function called use change language. So this function updates the um, i18n instance language to the current locale from the loader function. And locale will be updated, and i18 next loads the correct translation files. So let's see how it goes on the browser with the last configuration. So any route of your, you know, like um, files at Remix app, what I'm doing is importing one API called use translation and setting the value that we define in the very beginning um, of one of the translation files creating. So you can see, you know, now back and forth between, you know, like English and in this case, Spanish, you can see the content, you know, are, you know, like switching back and forth. But if you have realized a couple of things, I have three confessions. First of all, if you paid attention on the URL, yes, I use the URL parameters, which I wanted to avoid. Secondly, we developers need to maintain the translation files. And lastly, we didn't translate the slugs. So to clean up everything, what we haven't yet achieved, let's have a look at another example with the content management system. So the first step would be connecting your Remix application with content management system of your choice. In this talk, I'm going to show you the example with the story block, but I'm not going to cover, you know, like how you can create a connection Instead, I would offer you to have a look at um, the five minutes tutorial after my talk. And you can choose, you know, like with story block um, between four approaches. So from the time, again, I'm going to cover one of the approaches called folder level translation. And as you can visually see on the screenshot, uh, we divide it into the different folders to have different localized content. And let's see how it's going to work on the browser first before we are going to see, you know, like how we can create the logic from the source code level. So here is a very little, you know, blog application that I have built with Remix and Storyblock. So we are at right now in the default language of the home. That's why you do not see any, um, I would say like um, local related slug. So we are at the traveling to Salt Lake City in the default language. And when I move to the Japanese version of exactly the same entry blog post, now on the URL, we can see the Japanese slug, which says JA in front of forward slash blog. And the content has been localized. And on the right hand side, as you can see, um, content editors and the translators, they can already, you know, work on their own. And when I move back to the blog overview page, which we saw together before, in the default language, you can see the Japanese translated version with the translated slug. And if I go back to the root of the home with the default language, now I can see the content has been back to the default language, which is in English. 
let's move on to the fundamental let's move on to the logic how i was able to create um you know like some of the options for the not some of i mean actually like the options for the uh, content editors and the translators to have more controls and take care of creating you know these dynamic routes from the content management systems ui um i use the approach code splats provided from remix so in a nutshell um, besides from, you know, the important, you know, three APIs that we already covered before, loader function, use loader data, JSON, I wanted to pay attention to the green highlighted line of the code, which uses the special parameter code params with the square brackets and the string value of the asterisk. So if you set this value into the console.log and moving back and forth between different, you know, the um, pages such as like home or blog entry, you're going to see the false flags, you know, like being returned um, on your on your terminal. And then by using you know the special parameters, which is already provided from the Remix side, and a little bit of the modifications of the slugs, then you already have you know the um, logic that you just saw like um, on the recordings. I showed you. So here's a little summary of my talk. We saw together more than half of the users in the world access localized content. And next, um, by knowing more um, approaches to find better DX for your cases. So this is just one of the examples what I showed you. And if you do a little bit of more research, which I highly recommend you, um, I want to tell you that you will be able to find the best approaches that fits um, better in your cases. And lastly, um, I also want to emphasize about this, that um, I18N is related to performance, UI, and UX. And that's actually all about my talk. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoyed.